thoughts and you change your world. Action is the foundation key to all success. Get this concept in your mind. The church was established by action. Jesus gave the 12 disciples a command. It's called the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say sit around in a committee of 12 people and talk it to death until it dies. If you're looking for 12 people to agree on anything, you will die with old age before you accomplish anything. Don't wait until the printing press is invented. Don't wait until the radio comes along or television, or colored television is in every house in America or the dictator called the cell phone is dominating the world. You're not going to have to wait to that. Jesus said, go right now. Go into all the world. Go with the message that I have given you. Go in the power of my name. Go to heal the sick. Go and cast out demon spirits. Go with the power of the word. Be anointed with the Holy Spirit, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. America has powerless churches because we've kicked God and the word and the authority of the word out of the house of God. Let it come to us. Let it come back to America. We desperately need to find our moral compass. Can I get an amen from that? So how do I renew my mind? First, you accept the fact that failure is an event. It's not a person. That yesterday really did end last night. And today is a brand new day. God divided your life into 24-hour modules because that's all you could stand. Optimism is the foundation of success. Say that with me. Optimism is the foundation of success. Back to the statement. If you think you can, you can. If you think you won't, you really won't. Secondly, you need to understand that you are what you are and where you are because you think like you think. When you change your thinking, you change your actions. And when you change your actions, you change your future. Change your thought life and you change your world. So the question is, what are you putting into your mind? The old computer phrase, garbage in, garbage out. Stop watching eight hours of toxic television. Fake news. Why do you want to torment yourself with that garbage? Why? Pick up the good news. Feed your mind on the peace of God. Feed your mind on what this book says. The joy of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Joy in the Bible is a powerful thing. The pain of the past is forgotten in the presence of God. Joy is where heaven comes down and fills your soul. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching the gospel. They had been beaten bloody with whips and they were singing in the midnight hour. God sent angels down there to vibrate that jail off of its foundation and they walked out of that jail with the keys in one hand and a convert in the other because the power of joy conquered their circumstance and conquered their physical pain. Give the Lord praise. Now to one of the most powerful verses in all of the word of God, the prophet. Isaiah speaks to every person here and those of you who are watching television across America and around the world. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel and to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to comfort those who mourn, to give beauty for the ashes of sorrow, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The spirit of heaviness is depression. It's gloominess. God says, I want to give you the garment of praise. And with the power of praise, you absolutely throw off the garment of depression. And you begin to experience joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. I know that some of you in this audience and many of you watching by television are going through a very dark, trying time in your life, in your marriage, in your business, with your children. It's been a long time since you've really, really been happy. 
So for 60 seconds, I'm going to give you just a little therapeutic session of heaven. I want you to lift your hands and thank God for the victory that he's about to give you. Lord, we thank you for the victory that's coming. We thank you for the chains that are being broken. You pray. You talk to God about your situation. We thank you because you're going to bring peace that surpasses understanding. You're going to bring the oil of joy to my marriage. You're going going to bring our family unity back together again. You're going to give financial provision that I cannot see. The things that are broken in my life, you're going to heal it. Keep that going and let the joy of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow flood your heart and fill your mind. Now give the Lord praise in his house. who you are. You're a royalty. The royal blood of heaven flows through your veins. God, your father has taken from you poverty and given you the riches of Abraham. He's taken from you rags and adopted you as his own. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. He has taken your sickness and your suffering and given you divine health. He has taken your heartache and given you joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. What Satan takes from you, he will make and give it back to you many times over. He has given you the power of his word. He has given you the power of his name. He has given you the power of his blood. Give him praise for what he has given you. The way you see yourself today will affect your performance tomorrow. Nothing will ever be attempted at all if every possible objection has to be overcome. Things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Listen, everything is impossible until someone does it. Think about that. Men couldn't fly for centuries until the Wright brothers in 1903 completed the first controlled hour power flight in K K Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, and they flew for about one minute in a contraption that no one would get in today. But because they broke the thought barrier, now you can fly around the world on any airplane you want to. The harshest carriage was something that thought Generations thought could never happen. And then Henry Ford changed that. You can't possibly build a Protestant evangelical church in San Antonio, I was told, to seat 5,000 people and fill it. But with God's help, we did it because nothing is impossible with God. God's limitation is us. When you get your mind stretched with this one verse, nothing is impossible with God and whatsoever you ask in the authority of my name, I will do it. You put those two sentences together and God has given you a blank check to be what you want to be, to go where you want to go, to do what you want to do. No one can defeat you. Get up and get moving. Preacher, you can't possibly believe in the impossible. You can't believe that there's going to be the rapture of the church where people just suddenly disappear. That's impossible. In the natural, you might see that. But when you believe the Bible, it's already happened several times. A man by the name of Enoch went for a walk. And the Bible said he was not for God took him. Poof. He just went to heaven. He's been gone for 3,000 years and he's coming back. Elijah was taken into heaven on chariots of fire. He's still there. He's coming back in the book of Revelations to tell the people and the nations of the world that Messiah is on the way. The last person the Jewish people are told to look for in the last verses of the Old Testament, I'm going to send you the Elijah, Elijah the prophet, and he's going to tell you about me. Soon, and very soon, the trump of God is going to sound. 
The dead in Christ are going to rise. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. It's going to happen, believe it or not. Nothing is impossible with God. There's going to be a meeting in the air when the church of Jesus Christ sees the King of glory face to face giving praise in the house of God. Your thought life is the advance man of your true self. Its roots are hidden, but the fruit is visible. I can tell what you're thinking about when I just listen to you talk. I've heard people tell me over the years, when you get into a group of people, you don't talk much because you can't learn anything talking. But if you listen, I can tell you what people are thinking just by listening. And when I go home, I know where they are. They don't know where I'm at, but they know, I know where they are. The roots are hidden, but the fruit is visible. It's your best friend or your worst enemy. Your attitude draws people to you or it repels people from you. It's never content until it is expressed. It determines your success or failure. It does not depend on your circumstance. It depends on your choice. It's a rock rib confidence that endures no matter what the circumstances may be. There is no victory in life without a fight. There is no sunrise without a night. There is no purchase without a cross. And there is no crown without a cost. Your life embraces faith and you wallow, if you wallow in doubt, you will never celebrate victory. Satan attacks every person that God is getting ready to promote. That's a Bible principle. Look at Joseph. One day he's in jail, 12 years of reversal. He is now in an, Egypt, in an Egyptian jail. The next day he is in the palace of Pharaoh. He went from the jailhouse to the penthouse in 24 hours. When God gets ready to promote you, no one can keep you down. Keep your head up. 